back again with another review and tonight we're going to talk about Conan the Destroyer and yes I have the DVD here I did not show it the first time when I talked about Conan the Barbarian um, but I do have the uh, Conan the Complete Quest which is a two-in-one uh, but you know I look at the back here there are some features but it's for uh, Conan the Barbarian for example, you have Conan Unchained, the making of Conan. You have a feature commentary with the director and Schwarzenegger, which now I want to go back and listen to. Uh, deleted scenes, special effects, uh, the Conan archives, a trailer. And for Conan the Destroyer, you only get a trailer, unfortunately. But it would be nice to, you know, why can't that get features too? You know, you can interview the cast, you know, like Tracy Walter, uh, Grace Jones, uh, you know, have them talk about the movie, their experience, uh, because, you know, Conan the Destroyer, you know, watch it again, it was a lot of fun, you know, where the first movie, it's more of a brutal tale, and the sequel, it's more of the ensemble, it's more of a fellowship, you know, it was kind of Fellowship of the Rings before, uh, Fellowship of the Ring, I said rings, but you know what I mean, you know, it was before that, you know, because you have not just Conan, but it's like Conan and his friends, you know, they tag along on this adventure. And it's a lot of fun. It's a, you know, to me, an entertaining sequel, uh, which is why I prefer it more uh, because it's an ensemble, you know, because it feels more magical, like you feel like you're part of the adventure. Uh, but with this film here. It was directed by Richard Fleischer. Now, Richard Fleischer, you know, has directed several movies. Uh, you know, prior to this, he directed Fantastic Voyage, uh, which is a good uh, 60s sci-fi movie. He also directed Red Sonia, which I'm going to talk about here soon. Now, he also directed Soylent Green, which I've heard about but haven't seen. Uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And, yeah, so he's directed quite a, you know, Quite a few movies, um, notable films of, you know, like that, you know, like Fantastic Voyage, you know, it's a sci-fi movie, you know, Red Sonja haven't seen, believe it or not, but I've heard, you know, of Soylent Green, uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and he's directed a, and I say a few, but he's actually directed more than a few. If you go look at his IMDb, uh, unfortunately he's no longer with us, but, you know, he directed this movie. Now, the plot to this film here, you have Conan, who's commissioned by this evil queen to safely escort this princess and her bodyguard to this faraway castle uh, to retrieve this Horn of Dagon. But, you know, what Conan does not know is that, you know, once they get back, you know, the queen plans to take over, you know, to inherit the kingdom and have the bodyguard kill Conan. So, you know, throughout the film, Conan, the princess, uh, the bodyguard... And these other outcasts, uh, they set out on this adventure to retrieve this horn. And so they embark on this journey. And that's the plot here to this film. Now the cast here to this film, again, you have Arnold's back as Conan. And, you know, one thing that I was talking about in my review of the first movie, you know, while Arnold is so good, but maybe you can see that, you know, there's some rough uh, spots there, like a couple of rough patches in the performance. Uh, but by here, you know, you fast forward a couple of years later and, you know, one thing I thought about, you know, rewatching this film again, the word polished, because he does seem more, you know, polished here, you know, you know, in regards to his performance, uh, that you can definitely tell in that year or two years, uh, between this movie and between the first movie and this movie, I mean, I'm sure this was filmed in 83. Uh, but you can tell that Arnold's gotten better, you know, like he's still good in the first movie. I don't want to give that impression that he's not, uh, but he's still a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and, but here you could definitely tell that again, he's gotten better and he seems more polished. So, you know, Arnold's still good here. You have Grace Jones as Zula and I thought she was a good addition you know, a nice character. Uh, it was cool to see her in the film. And, you know, I think a year later she would be in A View to a Kill. 
which I, I like that movie. You have Wilt Chamberlain as Babata, the bodyguard to the princess. You have Mago, and his character comes back here. And I think this is the first time we hear the character's name, and I could be wrong about that, but you know, I don't think they had a name for the character in the first movie. And again, I could be wrong, uh, but he's back here. It was nice to see Mako here. You know, Tracy Walter as Malik. You know, Bob from Batman 89. Yeah, he's the sidekick to Arnold, and he's a lot of fun to watch. And he has some fun scenes. And you have the princess, uh, played by Olivia Diabo. And the only thing that I've seen her in besides this, uh, the movie Flying, which is pretty bad, with her and Keanu Reeves. Uh, that's a bad... Uh, flash dance rip off and I know that's a little tangent there but I would say she does better here uh, you have which later on the Dagoth monster played by Andre the Giant um, even though he's uncredited but you know when I look at this cast you have Conan which again Arnold's good here you know Grace Jones as his character Zula you know who wields his staff and she does a good job. Uh, you know, she has some fun scenes. Wilt Chamberlain as the bodyguard, Mako. You know, Tracy Walter's character, the princess. And I really enjoyed this ensemble of characters. You know, where everybody was unique. And everybody played off each other well. And that's another thing that I really enjoyed about this film. You know, was that everyone had a character. Everybody was different. You know, there was nobody, nobody was cookie cutter and everybody had a good banter, you know, between each other. And even like some of the stuff between, you know, Tracy Walter and Mako that there's this one scene where these savages are getting ready to cook Mako's character and Tracy Walter is making a couple of jokes about, you know, oh, this should have washed you first and, you know, this and that. So... You know, there's a little fun stuff there. And, you know, Zula, the, the way they brought her character in. You know, where, you know, she's fighting off against these villagers. And again, she has a staff that she swings around. and uh, But, you know, just a fun cast of characters. And I think, to me, that's one of the big highlights uh, with this film. Is this, it's an ensemble movie. And every character is fun to watch. And they really bounce off each other well. Uh, even Bombata, you know, with his character, he's throughout, you know, like he's with these characters throughout this journey. And then by the end, you know, you have them go one-on-one -on -one with Conan. Uh, but even with him, you know, tagging along with this group and the princess, I thought the cast here was a lot of fun. And again, Richard Fleischer directed the film, who did a good job, I felt, uh, directing you know, the way he handled the characters, uh, the way that, you know, the picture, it seemed like, you know, where the first film, I believe, yeah, it's two hours and 10 minutes, uh, but if you take away a few minutes, uh, so basically, you know, two hours and five minutes, you know, this one here, it's an hour and 40, 42, and I felt that, you know, that for me, you know, because of the characters, you know, it, the film moved along better. Uh, and I'm not saying that the first film is over long or too long or, you know, what have you. But, you know, I felt that, you know, Richard Fleischer did a good job directing. And, you know, it, I mentioned some movies he had directed, but I'd like to mention some other ones. He also directed Dr. Doolittle, uh, Tor, 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 which I remember watching that uh, in middle school. Uh, Mr. Majestic. You know, I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Red Sonia, and then like before that, Amityville 3D. Uh, the last thing he directed, according to Wikipedia, was Million Dollar Mystery, which, you know, I don't know what that's about. Um, but yeah, I see the poster here. I just clicked on that. But again, Richard Fleischer, I thought, in regards to the story, in regards to the characters, you know, the film moved along at a good pace. Uh, it seemed more magical, 
you know, because we're the first film, again, it's more of a brutal tale, you know, this one, you know, because with this film here, you know, the violence is reduced, but still I felt, you know, you felt the magical aspect of the film, you know, the adventure aspect, uh, the rapport between these characters uh, was really enjoyable. And it's credit, you know, credit to Richard Fleischer, who did, again, I keep mentioning this and I keep saying, but, you know, again, I felt he did a good job directing. So I give credit to the director. Now to mention fun scenes, I mean, of course you have the camel that comes back. I didn't even mention that in my review of the first movie. Uh, but, you know, the camel that Conan punches in the first movie comes back and vomits on Conan and Conan gets in another shot and knocks out the camel which is funny and then uh you got the scene where you know conan and the group you know they rescue uh Mako's character from being cooked by these savages you know conan goes in there and you know kicks some ass and tracy walter has a couple of fun lines with you know Mako's character while he's untying him um and then you have a scene later where you know uh conan is pretty much he's drunk and he's you know, teaching the princess, you know, how to use a sword and, you know, he's, you know, hitting Tracy Walter's character by accident and, you know, then he bl uh, blacks out. And then you got the cool stuff later on where, you know, they're in this room, uh, you see, you know, you see Conan in this room and he's surrounded by these mirrors and this beast uh, comes out, we know, which I like the look of the beast and Arnold gets into a little fight with this beast and then he realizes in order to stop this beast you know he breaks the mirrors and that was cool it's you know cool to watch and then like in the climax you have you know the creature you know the horned creature and you know like the way you know uh, the creature gets it you know where you have to take out the horn so you know, Conan gets on the back of this creature and he removes the horn and it's good practical effects. And, you know, so, but again, a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of the fun stuff, you know, throughout is with this cast. And again, it's a big highlight of the movie. And overall with this film, to me, it's an entertaining sequel and it's more of a magical tale. It's, you know, it's an ensemble piece. And, you know, while the first film doesn't hold back punches, uh, and maybe for some people, they feel that this film uh, is a bit tame for their taste, that it was more family friendly, more family entertainment, but, you know, I still enjoyed it. And I know, you know, there were some disagreements behind the scenes because Universal uh, wanted to make it like that. You know, they wanted to make it more, you know, family entertainment and you know, uh, kind of reduce the violence, reduce the brutality. But even with that said, I still enjoy this movie and, you know, it's entertaining, you know, because of the ensemble and, you know, a great score again by Basil Paladoris and the direction by Richard Fleischer. Uh, he definitely, you know, expanded on the, you know, adventure and the journey of these characters and the fun banter and rapport. And, you know, Arnold is definitely more polished here, I felt, in regards to his performance. Uh, you know, where the first film, he's good. Uh, and I thought between the first film and this film, he's definitely improved and gotten better. And, you know, in the same year, of course, you would have The Terminator, which, you know, is completely, you know, completely different performance. And, you know, one that would really propel, you know, Arnold to a whole nother level. Uh, but, you know, this one here, Conan the Destroyer, to me, is a worthy sequel. And it's a lot of fun, really enjoyable. And, uh, yeah, so if you haven't seen the Conan movies, uh, definitely recommend them. If you haven't seen Conan the Barbarian, go check it out. Same with this movie here, but, you know, watch them in order. Uh, so, but... Yeah, I would say this is my favorite one uh, because of the things that I mentioned. But overall, I just want to say thank you for watching my review and uh, stay tuned because next, now we're going to talk about the Terminator. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to 
watch that again. Uh, definitely a timeless movie. But thank you for watching and have a good day.